that we will now begin the webinar. Um, thank you very much to everyone who has, who has joined us uh, for this very first Civitas webinar. Um, first of all, I want to introduce myself. My name is Gustav Fries. I'm the Project Dissemination Manager of the Civitas Academides project, and I'm currently located in Walk. I'm sitting here. Uh, behind me is the bridge for those of you who can see my 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 webcam. Um, first of all, some practical details. Uh, since we are very many people here today for this webinar, we are uh, approximately 30 people, or at least 30 people has registered. Uh, so everybody will be unmuted but it will be possible to ask questions uh, through the chat uh, in the right corner. Um, and you can ask them to me or you can ask them to everybody and I will make sure that they will be, be set to the, the presenters. Um, that was just a practical thing because we have many people here. So, just a second. Another thing is that we will uh, record this meeting. Uh, it's only the sound that will be recorded, so don't be afraid that your faces will end up somewhere. Um, but it's just that you are informed that this will be recorded. I'll just have to unmute some people. Okay. So I want to invite, uh, say hello to everybody uh, to the Civitas webinar. Civitas is a network of 200 cities across Europe testing new technologies and innovative concepts to achieve sustainable and integrated strategies for urban transport. And this particular webinar is concerned about um, encouraging to a sustainable shift in mobility away from the personal car and towards clean and energy efficient transport. And this is done by addressing children and young adults. And the webinar is organized by Civitas Vanguard, Civitas Archimedes, and also the thematic group of less car intensive lifestyles. Just to give you a quick overview of the six Archimedes cities, uh, of which you will uh, hear presentations from four today uh, Alborg, Bryson and Hove, Usti, Madlaven. Yash, Monta, and Donostia San Sebastian. And all of these six cities are working with similar projects, and uh, you today will hear from four of them with their experiences working with uh, children and young people. So the program, is, as you have already, already know from signing up to this, we have five presentations, and after the five presentations, we will go to approximately 15 minutes of discussions and questions. If you have any concrete questions to a presentation, then please uh, please put it in the chat uh, menu, and uh, I will make sure that it will be asked to the presenter after the presentation, but only very uh, uh, short questions uh, uh, directly related to each of the the presentations. Um, good. So I hope you can all see the screen because we will have the slideshows on the screen. And if you have any technical problems, if you don't hear what I'm saying, or sorry, if you uh, experience any technical problems, then please send a chat message to. REC, uh, the REC meeting host, and you find the name in, in the list of participants. 
with this very short introduction, we, we will go uh, forward to the five presentation. Uh, and I will start by giving the floor to Elke Francois from Mobile uh, 21. So can you all hear me? Can you hear me? Okay. Um, I will start the presentation. Um, um, if you all can hear me, I hope so, then we can start with our short presentation on the, the European project on uh, Normally my colleague Yves would uh, give a presentation, but she was unable to do so, so uh, but I was also involved, or am also involved in the project. Um, next, okay, next slide. Um, the background and objectives of the Bambini project. So the, the aims of Bambini are increasing the presence of soft mobility in the lives of small children. Uh, also motivate their parents to use for free mobility and uh, okay, sorry to interrupt. Uh, the sound is very bad at the moment. You need okay. to have the microphone very close and keep it still. Keep it still, that's a difficult one. <laughs> uh, is it better? Yes. Okay, I will keep my microphone still. Um, so the rationalization behind the Bambini approach was that there is a lot of socialization and conditioning towards motorized traffic uh, already in, in the first years of a, a child. Um, uh, the car industry uses a lot of advertising intensely to create an emotional link to their product. As you can see on the photograph on the, the right side of the presentation, um, little boys playing with cars. Uh, we are talking also about t-shirts and uh, other clothing with cars, movies on cars, but there are no movies on bicycles and then trains and buses. So um, that's what we wanted to change. Um, as Barry is saying, the number, predominant number of toys are related to motorized traffic. Um, and also the idea that children have less, less and less exercise in their daily lives due to the increasing use of the car for short trips to school, to the shop, to hobbies, etc. Um, what did we want to do then to change all of this? Um, we are with 12 partners in 11 countries and uh, we have set up five application areas. Uh, the first one was to create toys and books focusing on soft mobility. Um, you can see there on the right side of the presentation the bicycle toy. Uh, this is one of the things that we have produced. Um, we also wanted to promote the Bambini conference during pre-birth and early months of the baby uh, because um, when people are getting are pregnant, uh, they, are start, they start thinking on how to organize their lives and most of the time they are thinking of, of buying a second car because they have to, to bring their children to the crash, to school, and they need the second car. Uh, so we have to motivate these people to think about this uh, before the baby is already born. Um, but next to that, we also wanted to, uh, to reach children uh, and their parents uh, from crashes to use alternative means of transport. 
Um, and next to that, there's also the kindergarten. So we want to create motivational programs for children in kindergarten. Um, and the last application area is the initiate, initiate traffic found areas and children's streets. So they, they uh, have the ability to play on the street, uh, to be safe on the street, to learn to bike on the street, etc. Um, implementing all of this, we have um, met, of course, several challenges. Um, this is a new team and a new target group uh, for uh, and finding a way in which we achieve a lot of effort in finding all the groups and children and people resources uh, and all the, the involved stakeholders there. Um, so uh, it was, and, and it differs in every country, so it was different in every country. You have to put a lot of time in it. Um, it's also a new content for the people in the field, for the crashes, uh, for free bird courses. Um, it was something that they did not uh, give attention to before. So we have to find a common way, a common ground between the world and the um, there were also participants in the state cohort that they could be friends, nurses, at daycare centers, teachers in kindergarten, uh, training centers for the nurses and the teachers, um, but there was also the lack of time, money and knowledge in this group on that team. Um, and uh, the last challenge was there is a lack of data, which makes it, made it a challenge to develop material and courses for the target group. Um, the results, we have set up a lot of things um, which can be found on our Bambini website, but I'll show you some uh, innovative stories that we have um, uh, developed. This one you have uh, seen on, the, on uh, the, the picture in the presentation, it's a bike <laughs> with this shoulder. Uh, the school of the 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 Sorry, Echo, the sound is uh, we're losing the sound again. Maybe you can just repeat what you said. Just very oh, slow and uh. Yeah, okay, sorry. Uh, well we have set up some educational materials. Uh, setting up workshops for uh, the professionals in, in uh, keyboard classes and crashes and kindergarten, and also uh, for their training centers, how to give attention to um, sustainable mobility uh, from uh, from from birth on. Um, uh, uh, notice that this is all in the, the languages of the, the, the project partners of the country, but it can be found on the website of Bambini. Uh, and we also developed um, materials for the higher education and university sector because they all uh, train um, teachers um, and nurses so, uh, also an important target group for us. Um, conclusion uh, for us, uh, the project is not done yet. We are still uh, busy with it. Uh, we are getting into the, into the final phase of it. Um, but uh, we can say that it, it was a new team, new target group, but a lot of interest in the field. Uh, it was also a challenge to find time and money. So we, we can say now find the means to do so. Also, policy makers are interested, but um, in, in the target group and the, the team, but it's not a priority. 
um, we are um, starting our evaluation or we, are, we have done uh, evaluations and getting the evaluation results will be done in, in, uh, before summer. So I guess this will be very interesting for all to, to have a look at it, um, what we have learned from it, uh, what can be done better, what we have to do in the future. Um, but this will be uh, done in before summer this year. Um, if you want more information or if you want to download stuff, um, you can go to our Bambini website. I have to say that the, the link that, that is over there in the presentation, it's not dot, uh, org, but it's dot in, in EU. Uh, that's the right um, link. So, but you can find everything over there. Um, and if you want to have more information, feel free to contact us, of course. So thank you for your attention. Um, okay, thank you very much. Um, I have not received any questions. If somebody has a very quick question, please uh, write it in the chat box. And we will we will give it. Okay. Um, doesn't seem that there's anything. Okay. Or else we will catch up after the last presentation. So, thank you very much, Elke. And uh, we will fast go to the next presentation, which comes from City of Monza. And uh, it should be ready just in a second. I will now give presenter rights to Simonetta and Paolo. Hello, can you hear me? We hear you, yes. Hello? Hello. Yeah, can you hear me now? Yes. Okay, okay, thank you. Good so morning, well. everyone. Morning. They cannot say anything, so they can say anything. You, you can find your presentation at the top of the screen. Okay, here it is. And then in the view menu, you choose view and go to full screen. Okay. Perfect. Okay, so here we are. Okay. Let's start with our background. Uh, Monza started to operate on uh, pedestrian mobility in walking to school since uh, 2001, since uh, it became a national coordinator for a walk to school initiative. Uh, actually, every October in Monza, we repeat the initiative, and we have 45 schools joining the walk to school week with almost 6,000 children which participate. Our objectives were to raise awareness about the benefits of pedestrian school mobility and uh, making the working environment an enjoyable activities and enjoyable way to go to school every day. Here you can see uh, in the picture one of our first tests of the working bus uh, with children uh, of the school Citerio, which, which is the, the school where we actually uh, showed the, the working bus during the consortium meeting of Archimedes in Monza, maybe. As for the implementation of the measure in, in Archimedes, we have now four primary schools which participate with seven classes, about 200 children. Uh, at the beginning, we had a mobility survey which involved the 800 families we have, who have their, their children enrolled in the four schools. Uh, for each school year of Archimedes lifetime, we had four participatory workshops in the school. Uh, and after examining uh, the roads around schools, uh, 11 working bus lines have been defined with travel plans. Uh, here you can see the lines on the map of Monza. And uh, not only in the seven classes which participate to actively to the project, but also to the whole school. 
Here you can see some slides about the pictures of children after going out to uh, uh, school to see the roads, replaces the replaces uh, what we, uh, what they had seen uh, in order to uh, define the, the travel plans. So our challenge is uh, it is important to have parents' involvement to consolidate the initiative since working masses are uh, managed by parents. So for us it's very important to have their participation, otherwise it won't be, it won't be possible to activate the, uh, uh, some lines. Obviously it is important to communicate the benefits of the working bus because uh, sometimes it's difficult to, for people to understand that uh, uh, even in winter when it's cold and when it's rainy, children can walk because they don't shrink up. And uh, a real problem is the turnover because the primary school lasts for five years. So, so when children come out from, from the first fifth grade, uh, also parents are not uh, available to to, to guide the, the bus any, any longer, even though in one school we have one parent, one dad, uh, who is still driving the bus, uh, the working bus, even though his, his daughter is not more in school. And uh, the other uh, important uh, challenge to afford uh, is to extend the measure to all the schools, because for now only four school, schools are participating. Our results. Uh, uh, in Chitario School, so we are in Chitario School. We have 46 children out of 360, and 17 parents who are actually driving the working bus. Manzoni School is a smaller school, uh, so we have a six, uh, 16 children and eight parents. Bonarroti School, uh, we have 40, 44 children and 14 parents. And Omero School is 39 children and 12 parents. So we can think it can be a good, a satisfying result uh, since uh, working bus are still working uh, every day. They, we just had a suspension uh, during uh, uh, very cool, very very cool days so we had here in Monza. And the conclusion, uh, we can see uh, that dri uh, drivers. Uh, um, and 95%, uh, 19 of percent of children can can be a good stimulus to strengthen this experience. And uh, if parents and teachers are sensitive to this approach to sustainability, it's easier for us to propose uh, these measures also these measures also in our, in our school. As for the years, uh, it's uh, rather difficult to convince people to change their habits, their habits, uh, especially when we have to touch uh, establishing timetables uh, in taking children to school, then going to work, then having uh, shopping uh, or going to the supermarket. Uh, and uh, at times, also every rock tax and weather condition can affect participation of children. Uh, here you can find the link to our to, to CVTAS uh, school travel plan page and um, thank you for your attention. Thank you very much, Simonetta, for this interesting presentation. Uh, we have a question from Rorinda from Dolis who says, why do some children need to wear a vest? Walking is normal daily activity and should be promoted this way. Yes, we asked them to. Uh, we actually asked them to wear a vest because at the beginning we wanted okay. them to be very visible in the street. Because for in our intention, it was also a mean to uh, alert alert people. Uh, there, there were there were groups of children walking because you know that now in our cities we have uh, school, uh, streets are not uh, at children's scale, so it was important for us to make them uh, recognizable in the in the neighborhood. And uh, uh, yes, the activity is uh, going on every day. Uh, 
for some lines, uh, uh, it can be activated only in some days of, of the week because some parents are not available due to their job in, job engagements. But uh, we can be very satisfied of the results uh, because uh, since October, uh, working bus is working every day. Okay, thank you very much. I hope this uh, answers the question. Uh, I, I can see why this question has been raised because uh, walking is a daily daily activity. So, so it's it's very much to also put on a list that not just uh, walk in the, in the streets, but I think it has something to do with with there's a lot of children suddenly that that needs to be be seen, right? Okay, uh, thank you very much. Uh, we will now jump to the next uh, presentation. We are running a little bit late, uh, but uh, I think we will be able to, to catch this. Uh, so the next uh, presentation is from the city of Usti uh, Laden in Czech Republic, and is performed by Martina Zokorova, uh, who will tell us something about the uh, traffic rules and, and the traffic court in, uh, in the city of Usti and how to teach children uh, to, to, to be mobile. So I will now give the floor to Martina. Okay. And I would like to introduce our presentation about transport behavior. So, the city of Ustinagnaven, in cooperation with the municipal police, has a goal to improve the health safety of its citizens through preventive and training activities. It is for preschool children, school children, seniors, and disabled people. Of course, there are competitions and public events and other training and prevention activities. Traffic uh, training for children has two parts. One is theory, which means training in the playroom, safe street crossing, safe way of safety rules for pedestrians, and visibility on the street. The practice part is about training of the traffic playground. It takes turns in the role. Preschool children. There's the password I can and I can't. And we uh, use some tools, which is practical presentations, practical assessments, and specific examples, for example, dangerous and safe play situations some games, etc. Primary school, there is safe at birth, which means safe way to school, safe behavior in my free time, and social interaction, learn, understand, and feel it. What they people is for all schools in the city, and it's about understanding basic traffic rules, Riding bike according to the rules, pedestrians in city traffic, and everything is based on materials of the Ministry <coughs> of Transport of the Czech Republic. Secondary school, it is about increasing knowledge of traffic rules. It is presentations in classrooms, rule violations and consequences, legal and moral phenomena, and discussions and workshops. Outdoor events, yeah. It is about demonstration of police work in free, on site visits and excursions, for example, five brigades, medical services, and preventive action, helping police officers, etc. Competitions and other events. It is about sport and athletic competitions on the topic of traffic training, also, celebration of Children's Day and feast, cycling competitions, skill competitions, and
know the tools that we can use. The training activity is uh, reaching our children. Um, it is workshop, discussion, training, and other interactive activities further include cooperation with probation centers, community centers, children's substitute homes in the city, and other city uh, hospitals. What is this challenge? It is mobile traffic court. Uh, not all children were able to attend the traffic court located at the premises of the municipal police. To make traffic training more accessible, the city of Ustina Vladan with Civitas Archimedes equipped the municipal police with the mobile traffic court. Child scooters, mobile traffic stands and traffic lights faced with traffic, reflected accessories and other road safety equipment and Civitas prison. And the result is safe traffic behavior. All fourth grade children attend the traffic court and undergo the training of the municipal police. Due to the new equipment and health of citizens, traffic training is accessible to all and more entertaining. Children in the city can read traffic things and understand road safety rules. And children are able to go safely to school and ride bicycle in the city. <coughs> this is everything. Thank you very much for your attendance. Thank you very much for this interesting presentation on transport behavior and how to educate children. Uh, very interesting. Uh, I have received a few questions about uh, the presentations uh, in general, and I can say they will be available after the webinar. Uh, and at the Civitas uh, EU uh, uh, webpage. We will give you a link uh, after the last presentation. Mm -hmm. So thank you very much, uh, Martina. And we will now go to the next presentation, which is uh, from the city of Olbo, where we will uh, hear about how to, to reach uh, um, young teenagers and how to convince them about uh, cycling to school. And that will be done by Anne-Marie Lauthoff, which now has the floor. Thank you very much. Um, good afternoon, everybody. I'm here today to tell you a little bit about our school cycling campaign in Oliver that we um, that took place in both 2010 and 2011. And the background of this campaign is that we were here in Ottawa have a mobile split where around 23% of the trips are made by bike. And uh, in order to maintain this uh, mobile split and even improve it in favor of, uh, of biking, uh, it is necessary to, to uh, to make campaigns that target younger people in order to secure that they will also bike when they get older. Um, surveys that, that we've done before, uh, the campaign showed that around 20% of the children within 5th to 7th grade, uh, and that means that they're around 12 years old, they um, they are uh, driven to school. Uh, and surveys also show that it is around this age that the target group starts to, uh, to go to school alone by bike. And so this group was chosen to be the main target group of the campaign. The campaign built on uh, also testing new ways of communicating with this target group. And uh, it builds on a homepage uh, and then on uh, an SMS service where the children will come put in a mobile phone number and get the SMS, uh, SMS uh, during the campaign. And um, by using these means of communication, uh, the goal was to communicate directly with the, with the children throughout the campaigning period that was a uh, two-month uh, period just uh, in August to October. And uh, we focused at creating a campaign uh, that was fun for the children to participate in as well. And uh, one way of doing this was that we wanted to create a universe around this campaign 
with the with some characters with the children they had to help these characters by solving riddles throughout the campaign period. Uh, and the campaign uh, was designed uh, with these reasons where the children had to go out uh, on their bikes and be active. Uh, and it was designed as a competition where the children, they um, they had, each school had a login for the homepage. And then they, when they solved the reasons, they could, they could look at the arranging score on the homepage where they could, they could see uh, where they were compared to the other schools. Three of the key challenges that we had uh, when we uh, defined this campaign was uh, that first of all, uh, we just wanted to create something that was addressed directly at the children uh, and also something that was uh, um, sort of uh, something that was interesting for the children to participate in as well. Um, but even though that we had the children as the main target, we also wanted to keep the schools and uh, the parents informed about the campaign. But it should be at a level where they just had the information. Uh, the campaign was not for them, it was for the children instead. And then we also focused at uh, creating something that could catch the children's interest. Because it is a target group that, um, that receives a lot of different information and has a lot of different offers. And so it was important for us uh, to create something that kept the children's interest throughout the campaign period. And so by working with, this, uh, with these riddles and uh, by making it uh, into a competition, uh, we hope to, to, to catch the children's interest and keep it throughout the campaign. Yeah, and of course you can say that also, this part about engaging the children is also something about that we, it's not enough just to engage them, we also just, we also want them to actually go up on their bikes. Uh, on this slide, I have just put up some of the, some of the results of the campaign. And as you can see, it's divided into three different parts, uh, because Actually, you can say that the first step is uh, to achieve the objective of creating sustainable travel behavior among the children, is that they actually know about the campaign. And then the next step is about activity that you're actually able to get the children out and be active on the back throughout the <coughs> campaign. And then the last and most important step is, of course, that you want to change the habits also in a longer perspective. And um, Based on the survey that we did uh, after, the campaign, after the campaign period, uh, around 80% of the children within the target group, they actually know about the campaign, which meant that they had seen the posters or, uh, or visited the homepage. Uh, and when it comes to activity, we could see that um, around 30% of the children within the target group, they were active uh, throughout the campaign, or that sort of what the survey showed. Uh, and we could see on the homepage that uh, the users or the visitors at the homepage, they spent an average uh, more than four and a half minutes on the web page. And that's relatively long time to be at a homepage. So that actually shows that <coughs> they were interested in, it, in this campaign. Uh, and another point that shows that they were interested in as well uh, is that there were more than 1,100 pictures uploaded on the homepage as part of the, as part of these reels during the campaign period. So uh, it's a campaign. And then the last and also very uh, most important result of the campaign, you can say, is that the survey shows that 20% 20 20 of the children, they say that they actually feel more like biking after the campaign. After campaign. So uh, that's, uh, that's very important. Yeah, the last slide here was uh, a couple of the main conclusion and, and more learnings and reflections you can say so. Is that um, the first point is about using the internet and the microphone as the ways of communicating with this target group. Uh, has for us shown out to be a good way to, uh, to communicate with them because it has shortened the distance uh, to the children because the mobile phone and the homepage uh, are so integrated 
are so integrated talks with big children's lives. So, um, and this has been a good way for us to, to communicate with this part of the group. And we have, of course, as I said before, focused at uh, keeping the schools and the parents informed. But we have uh, tailored the information and uh, we have uh, focused at not, um, at not using the time of the schools to, to get uh, the children back because we have communicated directly with them. And the last point is about that biking is actually fun. And this type of group perceives that biking as fun. Uh, and um, we have also focused that, that it should be fun for them to participate in the campaign and that has been very important in order to, to get them active throughout the campaign and period. If you want to, um, to read more about the campaign, you can still visit the homepage of the campaign at shipyouteschool.uk. That's in Danish, but I guess uh, if you want to, you can know, you can always have a look at the pictures. Um, but if you want more information, there are information available in English at the CDTS uh, homepage as well. Thank you very much. OK, thank you very much. Uh, we have a question here from yeah. Vita Kantic who asks, which means of communication did you use besides the web page? We used besides the web page. We used some, we can say, some more traditional means of communication. We had posters at the schools, and uh, there were leaflets as well produced at the schools. But um, that was sort of um, that was sort of just to inform about the campaign. All the campaign activity and all the news and all the rules, they were uploaded uh, on the homepage and um, to the SNS service. Okay, thank you. We will now uh, go further. Uh, to the last presentation of today from uh, Steffi from Bryson and Lowe's. So I'll just give her the presenting rights. Yeah. Let's, let's start again. Okay. Um, yes, this afternoon we would like to talk to you about uh, the admissions BMS project that we have been doing here in Brighton and Hove. Um, it's a groundbreaking science project um, which three schools have taken part in. The children from each school monitor air quality both in the, playing, the playground and outside the school. And this has helped them develop an interest in science and their understanding about the effects of transport activities, for example, on local air quality. So we move on to implementation. Um, Imperial College in London was appointed to work in partnership with the City Council at the beginning of the project. Um, Imperial College uh, delivered the educational component of the project through the outreach organisation OPAL and their in-house partner, Duvest Technologies, developed and provided the technology and carried out the research during the project. Um, the technology, which you can see here on the slide, um, enables traffic emissions and ambient air quality to be monitored using pieces of, of equipment. Um, the, the equipment you see here was put in and around the school um, and outside the school on the busy main road. So you see on the bottom right you have a picture here that says the OP2 unit on the bottom right. Um, this, this piece of equipment here, it monitors the emissions of passing vehicles and it was positioned on the road outside the school. So how it works is a beam of light was sent across the, the street and then, the, then that disk gets reflected back to the other unit on the other side of the road. And this is where the light um, is collected and analyzed. 
And when the light is analyzed, we can see what pollutants are present in this beam of light. So for example, as, as a, when a car drives through the beam of light, the equipment will detect what kind of chemicals the car has just emitted. And this piece of equipment here records traffic emissions day and night. The second piece of equipment here at the top right of the page is the 006 unit. This does something very similar, but this is positioned in the school ground. So it samples the eyes, the, the, um, the, the air sample that is taken in. So you can see what um, uh, pollutants are in the air. Um, here we also have a weather station. Um, a weather station was also installed, and it measures the temperature, the wind, the humidity, and the speed and wind direction. And all of these factors affect pollution values that we are measuring with the equipment. So we have to take into, into account all these factors, such as the wind and the humidity, when we were analyzing the data obtained from the roadside here from this unit and within the school playing ground from this unit. Go on to the next slide. All of these results were um, shown on a large plasma screen here. This was installed at the school so everybody could see all the live data um, that was coming from the piece of equipment that I've just talked about. And this plasma screen is also called a variable message, variable message signage, which is VMS, so hence the name of the project, which is Emissions VMS, if anybody wants to know what Emissions VMS stood for. And when, we can, when you can look at all this data on the screen, you can make real-time decisions from the data. So for example, the children may have looked at this information and thought, oh, we can actually, we know when it's a good time to go out and play, or we know from this data whether the school run in the morning with the cars affects the local air quality, for example. They're just some examples. And some of the older children analyze the data as part of their schoolwork, very much like what scientists do. And on the bottom right here, finally, we also had portable units here where the children could take them out um, and monitor the air quality on their way to school or on their home or on their way home or on a school journey, for example, as well. Uh, so far, two schools have taken part and the third school is taking part this year. The Imperial College's um, educational um, organization called OPAL, which I mentioned earlier, also talked to the children about um, the carbon cycle. They looked at things that emit chemical pollution, um, the things that absorb them, like plants and trees, which absorb carbon dioxide. So there was a real sort of educational part of the project as well. Um, and the children could test tubes in and around the school too um, to, to look at different uh, scientific things. The children also went to London to work at the university's uh, laboratory, which was uh, really enjoyed. Um, and they learned about liquids, gases, solids, and all about different pollutants, particularly um, emissions that they might find outside. Uh, just quickly moving on, the challenges. Um, there are a number of challenges. Obviously, location being one, each school is in a different location and in a different environment. So for example, the equipment needs power supply. So uh, for example, one of the difficulties we had was we were hoping that the lamp column at one of the schools was going to supply electricity to one of the pieces of equipment. But unfortunately, the lamp posts 
were not able to supply electricity to the equipment, so we had to find another way of supplying power to this piece of equipment. Um, so obviously, we, we um, a lot of site visits had to take place before approaching um, schools. Um, and again, we had fixing equipment on site again because locations were very different. They, you know, they weren't all the same. Um, we had to tweak the technology because it's such new technology and has only been used in a very few places. Uh, and then obviously this meant that the trial periods of the project were longer, which was expected since it's, um, it is innovative technology. Um, and finally, the results, the data is being collected and analyzed at the moment. Um, but we're, and we're also monitoring the traffic um, as well, with and in and without around each school. So this will also um, be good from an evaluation point of view. And we're also planning to return to the schools to do an acceptance and an awareness monitoring to test the long-term educational benefits of the program as well. Um, Thank you. I would just finally like to say that we've made a film about the project, and it's a really great film. So, and it tells you everything about it. Go to Brighton at www.brighton-hove.gov.uk forward slash testing the air, which is the name of the film. Um, and all this is also on the Civitas YouTube site as well. Thank you. Thanks, Gustav. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Teddy. Very interesting to uh, let, let people, uh, let children do something different than just going out in traffic, but also measuring the traffic actually. So that was very interesting. Thank you. I don't know if there are any any questions here, or else you have uh, have all these uh, uh, contact details here, so you can uh, maybe send an email afterwards if you have any, any questions. Or uh, have a look at the film. It's a very, very nice film. So I think you should do that. Um, OK. Uh, we have, uh, we have uh, used quite some time. It's uh, 3 o'clock now. But uh, I think that we can still uh, have some questions. If ever somebody has a question, then I would like uh, to, to have them, then you can write it in the chat window, and uh, I think that um, uh, we will then let each of you uh, ask a question uh, uh, by the phone or something. So, if anybody has uh, an interesting view or a question, then please uh, let me know. <coughs> As I said before, also the, the slides they will be uh, available afterwards. So if you have questions afterwards for the for the project, there will be contact details uh, as well. Okay. I'm not receiving many questions here uh, or comments. So I think that we will conclude this webinar. Uh, I hope that you have. Uh, got some inspiration to future work, or uh, yeah, got some got, got some good ideas from from these very short presentations. We we found it very important to keep it very short to to not uh, not overwhelm you with uh, information here. So I will just make myself a presenter for a second. And I will choose this one. So just the last things. Uh, there's this evaluation form for this webinar so that we can we can test if this was a, a success uh, or to what extent it was a success. And you will find this on this website. It will also be available 
Uh, afterwards, so please visit the Civitas EU uh, page uh, next week to, to get a view of the presentations and uh, fill in the evaluation form. So, I'll just check once again. Uh, we are also very uh, interested in knowing how this webinar actually works <laughs> technically. <laughs> Uh, how it worked technically, uh, was, how was the sound, and uh, uh, do you get enough information uh, during the meeting, uh, can you hear the presentations, and so on. So we are also looking forward to, to these kind of responses what? in the evaluation. So I would like to conclude now this webinar and say thank you to everybody who participated uh, in this uh, webinar. And I want to uh, wish you all a pleasant weekend. Thank you very much. <clears throat>